Thailand's long-term visa delusion continues. I'm going to talk about why Thailand elites goals to attract over 1 million investors over the next five years is everything but realistic. Before we take a look at the hard data, I wanted to fill you in on what the current visa options are and how you may apply for one of these visas. Thailand, just like many other Southeast Asian countries, have used the past couple of years to restructure its visa system. Things haven't gotten easier, things have gotten tougher. And that is something that I believe to be not good for Thailand's long-term financial goals because if Thailand couldn't attract that many people before the pandemic, what would make the government think that they can do it right now after the pandemic with there being more uncertainty, with there being still restrictions in place? It just doesn't sound like a feasible plan in my humble opinion. But let's have a look at the visa options. One, the Wealthy Global Citizens Program. This program is specifically designed for wealthy global citizens who are willing to invest at the very least $500,000 in either Thai approved government bonds, FDI, or real estate. On top of that, applicants are required to have an income of at least $80,000 per year for the past two years. A net worth of over $1 million is required as well. Two, the Wealthy Pensioners Program. You must have a pension or personal income of at least $80,000 per year, or you have a pension of less than $80,000 per year, but more than $40,000 per year, and are willing to invest at least $250,000 in either real estate, Thai government bonds, or FDI. Three, work from home Thai professionals. In order to qualify for this visa, you must have a minimum personal income of at least $80,000 per year over the past two years. In case you have less than $80,000 per year in income, but more than $40,000 per year, you may still qualify if you meet certain other requirements. And for the highly skilled individuals visa program. Again, you must have had an income of at least $80,000 per year for the past two years. In case you had less than $80,000 per year, but more than $40,000 per year, you may still qualify if you have the relevant work experience and education. Let's talk about why I believe these newly proposed visas are everything but realistic and also believe that not many people will actually pull the trigger. And I have good reasons behind what I'm saying here. If we take a look at some hard data, and that's actually the most exciting part, and I have some really important data here, okay? So from February 2018 through September 2021, Thailand had the smart visas in place, you know? And the smart visas, you know, they were different categories, okay? Just like Thailand offers right now visas for pensioners, for investors, for skilled people, for work from home professionals. So those visas, most of them already existed before, but most of them were not really successful because the requirements were just out of reach for most people. And what happens if that's the case? People go to a different country or people just visit on a tourist visa. They don't want to put up with, you know, putting in the time, you know, to potentially get a visa, knowing that it's just not going to work out because they simply don't have the financials in order to make it happen. Or, and that's actually more relevant than anything, they are unwilling to invest the money because they just don't believe that Thailand is a good enough option, a good enough deal. And people have good reasons to believe that. You just take a look, I mean, the right situation in Thailand. You as a foreigner, you cannot own land, you cannot become a citizen, and you have very limited rights in the country. So who would feel confident investing hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, let's assume you have the money, would you be willing to invest it in a country where you have zero legal strength? And that's more relevant than any other point that we are going to talk about from here on. Because this is super important. You don't want to put your money into a country where you don't know what's going to happen if you should leave the country. What's going to happen? How easy will it be for you to sell a property? Who will buy it? You know, is there going to be racism towards foreigners? Anyway, here's the living proof that whatever Thailand's government has in mind right now, will not work. We're looking at the data right here. And from what we can see is that during a three and a half year period, okay, from February 2018 
through September 2021, okay? So more than three years, three and a half years. Yes, you could argue some of the time was burned by the pandemic, and I totally have to agree with that. But 2018, 2019 was the best time for people, for investors, for people just looking to move to different countries because there was not as much uncertainty as there is now. And now people have lost trust in Asian governments because of how they responded to the pandemic. The response that we had seen from Asian governments was everything but desirable. But here we see now, okay, during this three and a half year period, it's lovable. Only five people picked up the smart investor visa, five people only. And the requirements, they were very similar, very similar requirements offered. The program was offered during the best time that this world had ever seen. Yet only five people took the government up on this offer. And that's incredible in my opinion, because that shows you that people don't trust Thailand. They don't trust the Thai government. They're unwilling to invest hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars into Thailand. Would I be willing to invest my money, hundreds of thousands of dollars into Thailand? No effing way would I invest any money in real estate, in bonds, in FDI, nothing. I'd be a tourist, I'd be a visitor, but I won't be an investor at this time. Potentially in the future, if there's a revolution, the government changes and laws become more liberal once foreigners have equal rights. Just like if a Thai citizen comes to the United States or Europe, they can become resident citizen easily. They can own land. They have the same rights as us if they come to the West. But we, as Western citizens, we have no rights in Asia. Nothing. No rights at all. So five people only took that investor visa. Incredible over a three and a half year period. And that shows me that people don't trust Thailand. People don't want to invest in Thailand. They don't want to bring their money into Thailand. They have their money in Singapore. They have their money in the United States, in Canada, in uh, Hong Kong, in Switzerland. You know, that's where I got my money. I am not going to put my money into Thailand or Malaysia. I'm not crazy. I'm not doing that. And so this is interesting. But here the data gets a little bit better. 200 people picked up the talent visa. Okay, so people had a special talent. But again, 200 people is not a whole lot. It could be many, many more. And in different countries, more than a few hundred people picked up a work visa. In Thailand, only 200 people get the talent visa. Then the executive visa. So if you work in a very high position, okay, here's the data again for the same period. Only 51 people over a three and a half year period got that visa. Not that many people. And here we go also, the startup visa. So people who were looking to start a business in Thailand, you know, out of the thousands and thousands and probably tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who considered the smart startup visa, out of all those people in a three and a half year period from February, 2018 through September, 2021, only 484 people took that visa. That shows you that Thailand is a poor investment when it comes to starting a business. Why? Because you cannot own, as a foreigner, you cannot own 100% of the company. You just cannot. You need a Thai partner and you need to give them 51% of your company. Do you feel comfortable doing that? I don't. Let's summarize because I think we have learned a few very important lessons over the past minutes. And that's just what we were able to see by looking at the data. I mean, the data says it all. If there were thousands and thousands of investors, people who put up money, you know, who bought real estate, who bought Thai government bonds in order to get a long-term visa, had there been thousands and thousands of people, we could say, well, maybe Thailand is actually worth the investment. It is a good deal. But since only five people, only five people were willing to put up hundreds of thousands of dollars to secure a long-term visa for Thailand, we can clearly see that Thailand is not an investor's playground. It just isn't. People are going to take their money to other places, to take it into Singapore. I'm sure more than five investors moved to Singapore in the three and a half year period. In fact, I know one of them. I know one of them. So definitely more than five people moved to Singapore. That's really staggering for the Thai government to believe that now with this revised version, ridiculous income requirements, that most digital nomads will never be able to meet because to have an $80,000 net income, it takes a good profitable business. And if people have this good profitable business, will they actually go 
into Thailand to get this visa or would they rather go into a different place? Because there's one concept that I've gotten to know and that concept is that Southeast Asian countries are best enjoyed if dealt at arm's length. That means you don't put in more than what you get back. If it's a bad deal for you, it's a bad deal. You better don't get involved. You just invest as little as possible to sustain yourself in the country, but don't go in with most of your money because you have close to zero protection in this place. It also tells you who really moves to Thailand because the people who have the money, they're not going into Thailand. So who goes into Thailand? Well, people that just want a vacation, people that just want to spend some time there, they want to have fun. You know, they don't want any serious commitments to the country because Thailand has not really proven to be a democracy. It is not a democracy, it's a monarchy. And it's a monarchy that's been taking advantage of Westerners forever, for the past decades. You have no rights there. The monarchy is taking full advantage of you. You've been milked. Is it really logical to suggest that Thailand's goal to attract over 1 million investors over the next five years is really realistic? Leave a comment below and let us know. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm uploading new videos on digital nomad locations, travel updates, and investment advice several times a week right now. And if you got some more time left, check out these videos.